Resurrection Sunday morning. What a wonderful day it is, and we're excited to see the sun come up and the birds are singing. But more excited than that, we're excited to see the wonderful day that the Lord has made. Thank you for your patience this morning. Uh, we're uh, experiencing a host of technical difficulties, and, uh, but God is greater than all technical difficulties. And uh, praise the Lord. We're going to be going to Romans chapter 1 this morning. Romans chapter 1 is where we're going to spend the day celebrating the resurrection of our Savior. For those of you who happen to be tuning in live right now, I want to encourage you to text some folks and uh, let folks know we were having trouble. They might have uh, been tuned in right there at an 11 o'clock hour uh, trying to uh, tune into the services and they uh, might have gotten uh, discouraged or uh, quit trying. But uh, text some folks, uh, Facebook some folks, let folks know that uh, we are, Lord willing, we are on the air and we are broadcasting. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin our services today. Heavenly Father, thank you so very much. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful goodness to us by providing the Lord Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for your wonderful grace, your wonderful love. God, that you would envision such a plan that you, God, would pay for us. You would purchase our pardon. And God, we did not have to work our way. And God, we did not have to purchase our way into heaven. But God, you loved us enough, Lord, to give us your blessed Son. Thank you, O oh God, for doing what we could never do. Lord Jesus, we thank you for going to that cross for us. We thank you, Lord, for drinking that bitter cup. O oh God, of taking the wrath of God for our sins. Lord Jesus, we worship you. High and lifted up you are. You certainly have a name above every name. Oh, Lord Jesus, we want to tell you we love you. We appreciate you. We adore you. We worship you today. For truly, you are the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Bless, Lord, your people today as we, Lord, stop today and as we uh, uh, commemorate this very uh, different day and very distinct day, the Resurrection Sunday. Lord Jesus, bless these services, we pray in Jesus' name, and amen. This morning, before we begin, I'll give you time to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. First of all, I hope that you were able to listen this morning or tune in to our sunrise service. I want to thank all, all of those who were involved in uh, bringing that together. That was certainly a labor of love, and that took a lot of hands uh, working very far apart. Amen? Uh, we made sure we did all the social distancing that we needed to do, uh, but uh, different folks folks uh, were involved in the sound equipment, the video, editing, uploading, music, and different things like that. So thank you to each and all. Uh, I've already had reports this morning that it was a blessing. And uh, several this morning were able to participate in a, uh, a live uh, morning uh, prayer time and devotion. And that was a blessing. We'll uh, consider uh, what we should do with that going forward. I do want to encourage you. We have had uh, several updates that have come in since our last service and uh, we have a brand new feature uh, for our church family you can call the church phone and uh, there are two options option one goes to our announcement hotline something brand new so you can dial the church phone number and press option one and that's been updated this morning church there are some very uh, important updates out there so I encourage you when the service is done or sometime today, would you give that phone number a call? Listen to those announcements. If you have any questions, you can call myself, uh, my wife, or any of our deacons, uh, deacon families, uh, and uh, we can explain anything on there. Uh, but thank you for that, and uh, please, uh, I would encourage you to participate in that. I want to continue to uh, encourage you in a couple of different things. Number one, let's continue. We are uh, powering through. We're now into the last part of the book of Acts. Uh, our, we as a church family are united. We are united around the things of Christ. So I want to continue continue to encourage you read a chapter of the book of Acts uh, every day. Now I'm pretty sure we're going to run out of the book of Acts before we run out of the quarantine. And uh, so you say, Pastor, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep reading. Uh, we're going to go right into the book of Romans. So when you finish the book of Acts, go right in. There are 16 chapters in the book of Romans. There are five major doctrines in the book of Romans that the book of Romans details. And uh, the book of Romans is a foundational book. It's a doctrinal book. It will help encourage you and strengthen you in your faith. So read a chapter of the book of Acts today. When you're done with that, continue reading on right through the book of Romans. That, Lord willing, will hopefully take us out of this quarantine. We'll be able to gather back together in God's house, and it'll be a wonderful time. Pray, 
pray. Join us in prayer. We're praying at 7 a.m. and we're praying at 7 p.m. We're praying as a church family. Join us in prayer. Uh, and continue to shine and share the love of Jesus. Yes, it's a very different time. I've been talking to one of our church deacons, Brother Borg, how it's just very different, uh, a, a different time, uh, changed uh, how we do what we do. Uh, but we're really praying about what we do. We are a witness and we want to continue to be a witness. This is a great time. Share the love of Jesus. Shine the love of Jesus. Have compassion. Uh, be a blessing. Go out of your way to encourage others, follow up on others, text others, call others. Right now it's very difficult to visit one another, but let's make sure our widows and our shut-ins and our elderly and the sick and the infirm, uh, they're being uh, uh, visited uh, at least by phone uh, and uh, encourage one another. I want to encourage you on that. Let's pray. Uh, obviously, uh, as this shutdown continues to go on in our country, uh, we need to pray for our leaders, pray for our president, our vice president, this task force. Pray for our governors and uh, our legislatures, those in authority, that God would give them wisdom. God would give them discretion. They're, they're balancing a very uh, difficult thing right now. Life is so precious. It's a precious gift from God. We do understand when we do, uh, we want to make sure we're doing, we're, we are being responsible. And yes, we are tempted to grumble and complain and uh, get upset about all the different things that are going on. And uh, But let's pray for our leaders, amen. Let's pray for those that have been impacted by this. Just learned this morning, one of our uh, uh, church, another one of our church family members, uh, the, uh, the shutdown and layoffs are beginning to impact them, uh, not only in their work, but impact them financially. So let's be praying for one another about the financial impact to our families uh, and to our communities and of course to our churches and then let me just say this by way of introduction and then we'll jump right into the message uh, thank you church uh, Rose Park Baptist Church family thank you for your faithfulness and giving your tithes and your gifts and your offerings so that the work of the Lord can go forward uh, so that we as we go through this time we can't meet together yet so many people are, are very concerned uh, that the work of God goes forward that the church bills are paid that we're supporting our missionaries uh, that those on staff are being taken care of and uh, we're doing everything we can do financially responsibly to make sure we are cutting our expenses guarding our expenses just like you're doing at your home we want to be good stewards but church family thank you so much for being faithful in your giving to support the Lord's work I do pray my heart is very moved for the uh, missionaries that are home on furlough for the evangelists who do not have meetings and the missionaries especially who are on the field uh, as church finances dry up here in America it has an immediate effect uh, there on the foreign field pray for our missionaries pray for the evangelists pray for pastors of churches that have been greatly impacted by this and uh, pray for one another well I think those are the announcements this morning join me I hope you've had a chance now to find the book of Romans Romans chapter 1 we're going to read verse 1 down through verse 4 Paul a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to to the flesh. Now notice verse 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Oh my friends, Resurrection Sunday made a difference. Today we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, all that Jesus did. What does the resurrection mean for you and what does it mean for me? Let's pause again and ask God's blessing as we go into the preaching of his word. Father, we thank you so much. God, we ask your blessing. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that we can celebrate a risen Savior today. And God, we ask your help in Jesus' name and amen. Resurrection Sunday, if we com uh, comprehend it together, what does it mean? Now, today, most folks refer to this as Easter Sunday. Uh, I've mentioned this several times. Easter comes from a different culture, a different religion, but it concurred calendar-wise with the resurrection, and so over time and in history, these two things have been merged together. But you'll never find in the scriptures the, the disciples, the Christians, celebrating, commemorating Easter. Easter's all about bunnies. Easter's all about spring. And can I say, I 
I love springtime. Hallelujah. I hate wintertime. I love springtime. I love bunnies. I love the cute little furry bunnies you can look at and pet and hold. I love little bunnies. I especially love the chocolate bunnies. I've not met a chocolate bunny I didn't like. I especially like the chocolate bunnies when they put the peanut butter inside them and you can bite their ears off. I love them chocolate peanut butter uh, uh, bunnies. I love the Cadbury eggs. I love the Easter candy. Uh, I love all of it, but my friend, as a believer, as a Christian, none of that ever changed my life. I look forward to spring. I look forward to chocolate, uh, chocolate at Easter time. But my friends, today is not about chocolate, and it's not about bunnies, and it's not about springtime. It's all about Jesus. And what made a difference in my life is Jesus. And what makes a difference for eternity is Jesus. And what will make a difference for you today is Jesus. And Jesus made a difference today. Now, this day, Resurrection Sunday, is a different day. It's a different day. And now you think about this, you, you, I like to put myself in the Bible. I like to put myself in the passage. And I think about, as I would, I, I would think about Resurrection Sunday. I, I would think about all of the horrible things that we would have witnessed if we would have been in that small band of disciples. And I would think about the dread and despair on, as the day dawned on a new week at coming out of all the things we saw and experienced and lived through last week. It had been a very different day indeed. You know, I, I can honestly say I was sharing with a, a family this morning. We were conversing. This is a different Resurrection Sunday. In all of my life and all of the time I've been a Christian, all the time that I, I, I've been involved in the things of God, I've never had a Resurrection Sunday where we didn't all. And usually, Resurrection Sunday, or as most call it, Easter Sunday, it's the biggest celebration of the year. It's the day that people just, you, people you only get to see uh, once or twice a year, they come and you rejoice. And the church is packed and we all have a wonderful time celebrating our Savior but this today, it's a different day. We think of just how different our life is today than our life was just a month or two months ago. It's a strange day, to, and I think actually, honestly, we can honestly appreciate a little bit more of how strange it was for them and how different it was for them way back then on that first Resurrection Sunday than we can today, than we have in the past. Life has just been so normal. You think of how Resurrection Sunday is a different day. You think about if you and I would have been in the, in the gathering of the disciples. Everybody's crying. Everybody's a mess. Nobody knows what to do. Everybody's confused. And all of a sudden, these ladies come busting in and say, We've seen Jesus. We've seen some angels. He's alive. He's not there. And everybody just, what, 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 what's going on? And, 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 and now we, we start hearing these reports, and different people are hearing of Jesus. And we think, can it be true? Can it be possible? It's unheard of. Everybody goes into the grave. Nobody comes out of the grave. It's impossible. It's inconceivable. But it was all true. Jesus is different. And Jesus distinguished himself from every other prophet, every other priest, every other king, because he and he alone conquered death. Can I just say, the, the message of the resurrection is so unique and so different. It was the central message of the early New Testament church. As you've been reading through the book of Acts, and then as you read through the book of Romans, and if you would read through the rest of your New Testament, can I just say, the early church made a big difference and a big deal about the difference of this day. This was a different day, because from time immemorial, from Adam in the Garden of Eden, everybody went in the grave, and nobody came out of the grave except by rare exception by the intervening of God. A prophet would come and maybe raise somebody from the dead. Jesus certainly raised a few people from the dead. But my friend, no one on their own power went into the grave and then came out of the grave. There was no prophet, no priest, no king. There was no incantation. There was no ceremony or service. It was that Jesus rose from the dead. And he decided this was going to be a very different day. Can I say there is hope because of resurrection? You have the promise of heaven because of resurrection. There is a way that is made uh, for us because this is a different day. Jesus did something very different. You think about the life of Jesus. He came into this world through a virgin's womb. There could easily be placed on the, that process of that thought uh, uh, no entrance there is no way that human life can come from a virgin's womb, and yet Jesus came 
through the entrance of the virgin's womb. Then he left this world through the empty tomb. Whereas no one can come in through a virgin's womb, no one ever came out out of the tomb. Jesus came into this world. It could be labeled through no entrance. And he left this world through a place where there is no exit, and that is the grave. This is a very different day indeed, a day that is different from all other days because Jesus did something very different. He arose from the dead. Not only is this a different day, but this is a defining day. Now, you may have wondered this. You may have questioned this. How do we know for sure that Christianity is right? I mean, there's lots of other religions out there. You might have, uh, when you went to college, you might have had to take a religions 101, world religions. And you would have been in, uh, in, um, introduced to all kinds of different philosophies and religions and all different sages and teachers. And uh, these people are convinced that they're right. And these people are convinced they're right. And these people are convinced that they're right. Well, who's right? Well, Jesus made a defining statement on Resurrection Sunday. You see, what sets apart Christianity from every other faith, every other religion, is that Jesus, our Savior, was alive, and then he died, and then he rose back to life again. You see, this is a defining day. You think about it. Wednesday and Thursday looked bad. Friday looked terrible. Saturday, things looked hopeless, but all sunrise on Sunday morning, things got a lot, lot better. Glory to God, Sunday is coming. Notice what uh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. And declared to be the Son of God. You see Jesus in verse 3 talks about his earthly incarnation. Jesus was a man. He didn't just look like a man. He had flesh and bones and blood. He had an appetite. He got tired and weary and thirsty and hungry. And yet this man, this Jesus, this prophet, this sage, this teacher, did something that no other man or prophet or sage or teacher ever did. He died and was buried and on his own power and as of his own accord rose again the third day. Death could not hold him. The grave could not constrain him. Can I just say in Matthew, as you read in Matthew and through the rest of the Gospels, the stone was rolled away not to let Jesus out, but to let the witnesses come in. Jesus was already risen. Jesus was already gone. Jesus was already ascended. And my friend, can I just tell you today, the stone was rolled away, not so that Jesus could get out. No stone could hold him. No grave could hold him. The pains of death could not hold him. No, the stone was rolled away. Not to let Jesus out, but to let us come in and to behold and to witness. Up from the grave he arose, a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. Indeed, today is a defining day. You want to know why I'm a Christian? Because Buddha is still in the grave. I mean no disrespect to that. Allah is still in the grave. The other prophets, the other preachers, the other religions, they have a dead leader. Christianity and Christians have a living, risen, and may I say soon returning Savior. This is a different day, resurrection, because something different happened. This is a defining day because this is the day that defines why Christians are Christians. This is also a declarative day. It is very interesting, after this day after this time and by the way in case you're wondering from the this day forward from resurrection sunday the disciples the christians always met on the first day of the week you see the resurrection changed everything it changed who we worship if you got to listen to this morning service uh the sunrise service it changed who we worship it changed where we worship it also changed when we worship and the disciples met and commemorated the resurrection of the Savior from that day forward. And my friends, that's why we meet on Sunday and not Saturday. We do not observe the Sabbath as Israel. We commemorate the risen Savior. We are in a new time, a new testament, a new covenant. And my friends, this is a declarative day. From this day, from the day that Jesus rose from the dead, the mission, the purpose, the plan, the program was to tell everybody 
that Jesus arose from the dead. Now, back 2,000 some odd years ago, it was like, wow. It, it was unheard of, it, unimaginable. In fact, as you study the life and the ministry of the Apostle Paul, as he went to Athens, and as he stood on Mars Hill and gave that uh, very powerful, it, it's called an uh, apologetic explanation. Now, apology or apologetics doesn't mean I'm sorry, I'm, 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 I'm sorry for what I did. No, apologetics means to give a reasonable, logical answer for someone who's in asking you what, why and what you believe. The Apostle Paul laid out a very logical and concise from the creation to the judgment. And when he brought up the resurrection, they listened intently. Uh, their Greek logical minds were focused and they could see the development uh, of his statement and of his purpose and of the layout. And they got all the way down to the resurrection of the dead and they were like, whatever. I mean, come on. I mean, that's just a joke. Who ever heard of that? And they had never heard of it. For all of their life and all of their history and all of their writings and all their wisdom, people went in the grave and people never came out of the grave. And yet this Paul affirmed, he testified that Jesus was alive and he died and now he rose again and they listened unto the resurrection of the dead. This is a declarative day. From the day of the resurrection forward, Christians, you have one job. I have one job. That job is to tell the whole world that Jesus is alive. This is a declarative day. The message of the, of the cross, the message of the Christian is that there is a, li excuse me, a living way and a living Savior. And our job is to tell the whole world that Jesus lives. Now, you know what the problem is now? 2,000 some odd years ago, they were like, wow, Pff, mind's blowing. Now we're like, oh yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. Where's my coffee? Where, where's, where's, that, where's that chocolate at? Now the problem is it's not mind-blowing, it's mind-numbing. It's just taken as a statement of fact. Oh yeah, Jesus rose from the dead, big deal, who cares? It, it's gotten to be such commonplace. It's gotten to be such a, 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 a well-understood and established fact of history, whether the scoffers believe or not, who cares? Let God be true and every man a liar. By the way, tonight I'll be preaching at 6 o'clock a message on what if. What if the resurrection did not happen? What if the History Channel's right and they found the box of Jesus' bones over there in Israel? They didn't, by the way. Uh, but what if? Let me bring a message on that tonight at 6 o'clock. Lord willing, we'll get it on tape and we can get it on the internet. Hallelujah, that's a bonus. But may I just say the problem today is that people are like, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. So what? The so what is one day you're going to go in the grave. That's the so what. One of these days, your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, your children are going to go to the grave, and you're going to go to your grave. And my friend, the declaration of this day is that grave is a permanent stop in this life. My friend, before you hit the grave, you better hit the altar and ask Jesus to be your Savior. That was the declaration. The Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. My friend, the big deal about Jesus going to that cross and then going in the tomb and coming up out of that grave is the fact one day you're going to die. One day you're going to face God. And one day, you're going to have to give an answer for your life and your sins. And either your sins are going to be covered under the shed blood of Jesus, or my friends, one day, you're going to face the wrath of God and have to pay your own price and your own penalty for your sins. And by the way, the, that judgment, that price is to spend an eternity, an eternity that never ends, separated from God in an awful place called the lake of fire. It's called, some people call it hell. My friends, that's the big deal. This is why Christians do all that they do. Christians are not perfect people. Christians are not, uh, uh, perfect, uh, Christians are not uh, perfect people. They're forgiven people. Let's just put it there. No, my friend, don't look at the Christian. Look at the Christ. That's a big mistake in Christianity today. The big deal is this. The declaration was there is an opportunity for you to have your sins forgiven. And that leads me to my last point this morning, the last truth. This is a different day. This is a, uh, uh, a declarative day, but this is a deciding day. My friends, what will you do with Jesus?
This is a deciding day. We've come now to the conclusion of this message. Can I say everything that Jesus did, he did because he loved you. He lived because he loved you. He died because he loved you. He rose again because he loved you. And my friends, this is a day that you have to make a decision. You have to come to the place, every single man and woman, boy and girl, has to come to the place where they say, what will I do with Jesus? My friends, this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to make the Resurrection Sunday personal. This is what made a difference for me. I realized there came a point in my life I realized I was a sinner. I realized I was going to die, and I was going to have to face a holy God, and I knew how unholy I was. I needed to be forgiven. I needed a Savior. I needed someone to forgive me, and that someone was Jesus. And Jesus was knocking at the door of my heart. He might be knocking at the door of your heart right now. He might be asking you to let him in. My friend, won't you do that? Why don't you right where you are in the, wherever you are, whenever this is, however you're watching this, stop, bow your head. Ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come into your heart. Believe, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. My friends, this is a deciding day. You have to decide. I can't decide for you. Parents, you can't decide for your children. Spouses, you can't decide for your spouse. You can't decide for your parents or anyone else. You have to decide. Will you face eternity covered under the shed blood of Jesus Christ, being forgiven of your sins by God's decree? Or will you face God without the love of Christ? Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father. We thank you so much. Oh, God, who would have ever imagined such a wonderful plan, such a wonderful program, oh, God, that you would make a way for us. Thank you, oh, Father. Heavenly Father, we can't love you enough. We can't thank you enough. We can't rejoice in you enough. Oh, God, for your abundant mercy. But we do. Lord, we thank you for all you've done. This morning, as you listen to this, if you're at a place where you can bow your heads, I encourage you to, to bow your heads. My friends, I, I have two, two, two summary statements. Number one, if you're here this morning, if you're listening this morning and you have never put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, would you do that today? Would you do that today? Would you take the time? Would you ask him to forgive you of your sins? Would you invite the Lord Jesus to save? If you're listening to this today and you are saved, you're on your way to heaven. My friends, when's the last time you thanked Jesus for what he did for you? When was the last time you thanked Jesus for dying on the cross for your sins? When was the last time it really struck you that you were lost? You were undone. You were on your way to a Christless eternity. And Jesus intervened in your life. I ask you, I invite you to go back to that day and go back to that hour and go back to that place where you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and thank him, thank him so much. Our Heavenly Father, we commit this service into your care and into your plan and we ask, oh God, that you would do your work in our hearts. And we thank you, Father, for this in Jesus' name and amen.